Treated some difficult patients in some difficult locations, but this might just top all of those. The open ocean and a shark. But today could be life saving. Chris is in the Sydney suburb of Manly. He's meeting up with Dr. Rob Jones and a team of specialist divers from Sea Life Sanctuary. Alright, so we're just about ready to go. They're about to attempt a groundbreaking grey nurse shark rescue mission. Chris, how are you? Good to see you. Obviously, didn't get the memo about the, the dress code. No, 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 but this is how we dress to save sharks, basically. No, this, this could be quite the day. Oh, look, really hopeful. Mm. Like, this could be just wonderful. I mean, these sharks are critically endangered. We know there's one out there with a hook in it. Yep. We've just got to get out there, hope we can find it, get it up, get the hooks out. Not going to be easy, though. Not going to be easy, but... Yeah. I've got my gear, you got yours. We're good to go. Let's get out there. OK. The aim of today's unusual rescue is to try and save a young female shark which could be in serious trouble. These sharks are classified as being critically endangered. There's only around 1,500 maximum along the east coast of Australia. These sharks are quite young in this colony where we're going into today, so they're essentially the future of the entire species. Recreational divers spotted the distressed shark entangled in fishing line and with a hook in its mouth at Magic Point a few hundred metres offshore. Now imagine these hooks, if they've been in there for a while, they're not going to be easy to get out. No, some of them are pretty deeply embedded, yeah. and uh, whether we'll be able to get the whole hook out or not, or just actually cut it off at the base of the jaw, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, but we're on the clock, aren't we, once that shark we are. comes once out? Once that shark hits the deck, 10 minutes is about the ceiling. I really don't like keeping them up for any longer than that. OK. But I guess the, the biggest challenge initially is, is first of all, finding the shark. Yep. And then, and then actually catching it, really. Yeah, you know, they're down in 16, 17 metres of water, so it's a pretty big task. Yeah. It will be a risky operation to try to save this injured and critically endangered grey nurse shark. What we're trying to attempt today is essentially a world first technique. I mean, we're going into a shark's habitat, trying to corral it, catch it, bring it to the surface and remove something that could ultimately threaten its life. So it's ambitious, it's risky, but we've got a good team today, so we're every chance. What's happened here? Um, we just had this little guy brought in. Wow, um, OK. His mum was found on the side of the road. Oh, no. The police um, found him in the pouch, so oh, they've wow. just brought okay. him in to have a check. A newborn swamp wallaby has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash after a car killed his mother. Jeez, he's strong, isn't he? Yeah. Wow, he's very young, he's though. He's very, very young. All right. So little. So little. Yeah. These are tiny neonatal animals and they are very fragile and they all die fairly quickly. So the most critical things are to keep him warm, check him out for internal injuries or any structural injuries, and then get some nutrition in there. We'll just see if everything's working all right inside. Heart sounds good. He's got no blood around his mouth or his nostrils. He's a nice pink colour, his gums are nice and pink. His legs are good, his tail looks pretty strong. His abdomen feels all right. He doesn't have any obvious bruising or anything. Yeah. Everything checks out pretty well. Seems like a bit of a fighter. He is. He's been very lucky, to be fair, because he could have been damaged in the road accident. Uh, he could have been there for a day or more and, and suffered from malnutrition and dehydration. And so, thankfully, he's in a fairly stable condition, so we can now transfer him to a carer who can feed him, keep him warm, and hopefully, uh, give him the start in life that he's been taken away from. Now we'd need to make sure he does not get cold because he has no hair on him. So let's get him into a heat warmer and he can get some nutrition, all right? Yep. We're in the middle of Sydney. We don't get a lot of joeys, but it's nice to see in the city that we still have this sort of wildlife around. And it's exciting and hopefully we can get a good result. Oh, look at you. You're going to be such a big boy when you grow up. OK, Mr Joey, let's pop you in your bed. 
can be your pouch that you will now live in. Good boy. All right, Mr Joey, I'll get you some food organised now. You have a little sleep. All right, this is the spot. It's called Magic Point. Time to get the wedding on and get under there. On Sydney Harbour, Chris is gearing up for an important rescue mission with a specialist team of divers. They're about to try to capture a critically endangered grey nurse shark, which has been spotted entangled in fishing wire and with a hook in its mouth. There are a couple of really important stages in this whole process. First of all, I'm going to go down with the other team and try to find the shark that has the hook. The capture team is going to move in with what is essentially a large sock. On the base of the sock, there's a stretcher. If they can herd her into the sock, then I'll close it over top of her and bring it to the surface. It's all systems go now, Chris. It is. Get down and bring up that shark. In order to help this shark, first of all, we have to find her. So I'm heading down into the cave where she normally resides, and hopefully we'll spot her there. But as soon as they get to the cave, there's a problem. You look in there, and there are six sharks looking back at you. And these sharks are all of a pretty similar size. So we have to try to find the shark that has the hook. It's going to be tricky. While Chris and the team are trying to find their patient, on deck, Rob is making sure everything is prepared for the shark's arrival. We really want to try and have the sharks on the deck for probably under 10 minutes. So we do want to move and work pretty quickly. The sooner we can get it back into its own environment, the better. The team is struggling to find the injured shark when suddenly one of the divers spots fishing line coming out of a shark's gills. Now that we have a confirmed sighting, the capture team is now going to move in and bring it to the surface. They have to work fast while ensuring their patient doesn't become stressed. It will be showtime. Follow up this oxygen. Yep. Okay. With the shark now on the surface, the pressure to find the hook is on, but it won't be easy. This shark is a female. She's more than one and a half metres long. She's at that age now where she's setting herself up for hopefully a long breeding future. But this fishing hook and this fishing line could prevent all of that. Chris, you want to grab that pole? Just see. Just see. Yeah. I'm all too aware of the fact that we're on a strict time limit here. We only have 10 minutes with this shark out of the water. We've got to get moving. The team can already see the fishing wire coming out of the gills. Now they have to find the hook. Yeah. Yeah, I can see some lines. That some line that base that tongue there. It's looking pretty deep, isn't it? Yeah. So, so, the, so the hook's gone in. Yeah. It's swallowed it down so far. Yeah. But the hook has actually gone into its digestive yeah, system. Yeah, it'll be down the esophagus. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can't get the hook out. It's, yeah. too, it's too far down. Yeah. And we don't have endoscope or anything like that. So okay. we're just going to have to accept that that's what it is. Yeah. Hope it's one of those hooks that will rust out. Okay. Whilst we'd obviously love to be going inside her and removing that hook, it would only put her life in more danger. So really, we have to cut the line at the level of the gills and give her some antibiotics and multivitamins. With some time, that hook should corrode and actually pass through a system quite naturally. All right, needle coming out. Right, okay. Beautiful. Coming up eight minutes, Rob. Thanks, Dave. For this shark, really, we've done what we can. And given her body condition isn't too bad at the moment, she's a really good chance of mounting a really strong recovery. Now it's time to get back in the water. OK. Up and out. She's out of the water, so we need to move fast. After all the mayhem of the last nine minutes, she actually goes into the water quite gracefully. She's just gently caressed into the water and then swims off. She's off. <laughs> Very strong. Yeah. Well, we managed to buy her some time. She's going to have a much better chance now than she did half an hour ago. Exactly. No question at all. Yeah. Look, we're happy because this shark has now got a chance that it wouldn't have had before we, we did this today. And the whole procedure's gone smoothly. Everyone that we can get up, de-hook, has the potential to be a future breeding um, adult in this population. So pretty happy with the way it's gone. Joey, 
Grandpa, you're sleeping. You look so cute. At Sash, little orphan Joey is getting plenty of attention. But now he's well enough to be handed over to a specialist carer from the rescue group Wires. Raising these little Joeys is hard work. They're like tiny little infants, like baby humans, baby horses, baby Joey, kangaroos. They all take round-the-clock care, so they're a lot of work and uh, you need to be very dedicated and experienced to do it. Come on in, Maureen. Let me introduce you to little Joey. Oh, wow. So he's been christened. He's pretty feisty, Maureen, mm. and he looks pretty well as far as I can work out. He just needs some good nursing care, I think, and obviously being how young he is, I think he's going to be a handful for you. Yep. Yeah, he's very lucky that he was found. Not many people will stop for dead animals, and they don't stop and check pouches either. There you go, little mite, you get in there. Got a new mum now. Maureen's going to take care of you. That's great. The little orphan will be fed six times a day and eventually, when he's strong enough, be released back into the wild. And that's what the ultimate aim is, to get Joey healthy enough that he can look after himself, fend for himself and be released hopefully into a national park somewhere um, close by to what his territory was originally or his mother's territory was. That's the critical thing. Okay. All right, Joey, good luck, little mate. Thanks, Steve. Hope all goes well. Okay. Good luck, you. Maureen. Bye-bye. OK, we'll settle you in and we'll get you home and give you a feed. I love caring for Joey's, it's very satisfying. The next step is I'll take him home, keep him warm and then feed him 24-7 till he's ready to be released. Do that cricket. In Bondi, five-month-old Cricket has well and truly settled in to her new life with Chris. There's um, definitely something going on. Cricket is obviously the kitten that I adopted a few months ago after she was found in a park in a box. Good Samaritans brought the little orphan into the clinic. See, she's not mm. very happy putting that left no, she's not. She... front leg down. And x-rays revealed the tiny battler had a badly broken leg and needed urgent surgery. All right, I'm done there. She's had quite an interesting few months with me. She's understood the meaning of destroying furniture, keeping me up late at night, waking me up early in the morning. But now there is a new twist in the story of cricket. I feared this day would come, but I didn't think it would happen this early. She's only just turned five months old and this purring and this calling and this bum in the air thing can only mean one thing's going on. Cricket is on heat. And Chris isn't the only male to notice Cricket's change in behaviour. Exactly how many guys have you invited around? This is kind of every dad's worst nightmare. Their little girl has grown up and there are hundreds of men hoping to get their little mitts on her. Oh, you're looking outside, are you? Yeah, you know why? Because you attracted him. She's in season and she's not scared to let people know about it. I'm obviously a big believer in desexing cats. The last thing we need are more unwanted kittens. I'm just surprised she's come on heat this quickly. There's only one thing to do. She's coming to work with me tomorrow and we're going to sort this whole thing out. This girl has grown up just a little bit too quickly. Tomorrow you're coming with me. And he's going to be disappointed. Oh. Get in the way of a young girl in her plans. Remember this place? Next day, Cricket is the first appointment booked in at the Bondi Clinic. 
Oh, hello. It's cricket. Today is the very necessary next step in the saga of cricket. Clearly, when she's on heat, we need to do something about it because when bad girls stay bad, eventually their past catches up with them. She's just started to get a little. Um... Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yes. I know. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Uh -uh -uh. I've kind of lured her in here on the belief that since that's a couple of months since the operation, it's time to check so how her legs healed. Right. Okay. And if that pin is, is nice and stable. Cricket had a bad fracture that required a pin to essentially hold the bones in place. That pin's now been in there for a couple of months. So there is an opportunity today to potentially remove that pin if the pin has loosened or if the pin is just no longer necessary. They're the same length, are they? Yeah, yeah pretty much. She's got a full range of movement there. Yeah. So I just think probably the best thing for her is to take an X-ray. Cricket certainly had a good recovery and a good rehabilitation, but she's still been a kitten and she's still been jumping all over the place and all over me. So there is some concern about how quickly and how properly her bones have healed. The X-ray will show the metal pin in Cricket's leg and whether it has stayed in the correct position. Yep, go. Pin actually looks all right. It kind of looks like a normal humerus with a, a pin inside it now. Yeah. The x-ray is showing two really interesting things. First of all, the bone itself has healed up brilliantly. You would not even know there was once a serious fracture there. But secondly, the pin is not an issue. It's sitting well inside the bone. In fact, the bone's grown up and over the top of it. So, it doesn't need to be removed today. Look how cranky you are. What is it? It's almost like she knows what's coming next. Well, they do have that extra sense, don't they? While the x-ray shows she doesn't need one operation, there is no dodging the desexing today. That is going to happen. And I'm going to make sure of it. Oh, you're a daddy's little girl, really, aren't you? Hey? Daddy's trying to be strong, so oh, let's, yes. let's get on with it. Hold the sympathy for a right. half an hour. Hey, I love you too, mate. Hold on. Not long now. At the Australian Reptile Park, General Manager Tim Faulkner also has his hands full with a little orphan Joey. You ready for another Mother's Club meeting? <laughs> Here's your bottle. Cheers. How's he going? Yeah, he's good, eh? He's still real sooky, right? Yeah. Tim and Senior Park Keeper Bill have started a daily mother's group. No tongue. After becoming full-time carers to two orphan Joeys. You ready for some milk? Caring for orphaned animals, and in this case, marsupials, kangaroos, 24-hour job. It doesn't stop. Six feeds a day. In between, then, you've got to toilet, clean up after. They're awake through the night. But a big part of that is giving them their bottles, their nourishment. He's a happy little roo. Is that his belly? Yeah. <laughs> He's shaking his He's chugging it. <laughs> Nine-month-old Reggie and six-month-old Russell both lost their mums due to horrific circumstances. Without round-the-clock care, these little joeys would have no chance of survival. He's done a good job, but, mate, because he was a tough gig. Orphaned at such an old age, he used to get in a much smaller. I, I can't believe you've turned him around to be your mate. <laughs> yeah, he's your best mate, aren't you, mate? In the wild, joeys rely on milk from their mother for at least 12 months. Tim and Bill will need to keep feeding these babies until they're old enough to fend for themselves. That's it, it's all gone. You want to come for a hop with Reggie? I know you're not going to like that, but it's time. Yeah. You're a good little fella. Come on, let's go for a hop. Red kangaroos are social. The way that we need to develop their skills, and even makes their body physically stronger, is to get them out into our park area. There you go, mate. There are other kangaroos that are adults, there are hazards, and there's, of course, people. But all of that teaches them and develops them to be independent roos. Do you want to have a pat? There you go. Yep. Do you know what sort of animal he is? Kangaroo. Yep. Then do you know what sort of kangaroo? I'll give you a hint. See the colour there behind his ear? What is it? A desert kangaroo or a red kangaroo, that's right. It's Very a big clever. day for Russell, as it's his first time being surrounded by a crowd. Right. Now you have to say, go Russell! Go on! But Tim knows it's an important step for the little Joey to gain his independence. They're great as little ambassadors. And we... 
<laughs> He's cheeky. <laughs> There's kids everywhere, and Russell's actually startling them. Not the other way, but he's getting used to the whole thing, and he's having a ball. You got him. The budding little ambassadors are a big hit with park visitors. But now it's time for their all-important daily weigh-in. Come on, mate. This way. I'm not coming back to pick you up. Come on, pal. That's it, boy. Let's go. Let's go. This is your last chance, miss. OK, Chris is lovely as your dad, but he's way too young to be a granddad, you know? Thank you, Neil. Good to see you on my side. <laughs> At the Bondi Clinic, Chris's parenting skills are being put to the test. Five-month-old Cricket is on heat, so Chris has brought her in to be de-sexed. It is very much a routine operation. It's a spay. It's an operation I've done thousands of times before. But somehow today, it's different. And it's different because it's cricket. Everything's run smoothly. We obviously discovered the cyst in there, which was quite remarkable, but that's been removed. You waking up? OK, come on. You ready to look at me? Not yet. So now, it's full steam ahead to what should be a normal life. Well, normal, apart from the fact she lives with me. Good luck with that. There we go. Let me sleep it off. Yeah. Later that day, Chris has been called out to Double Bay near Bondi after an SOS from a concerned resident. You're not Richard, Richard. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. And hey, Joey. Nice. Hey, Joey. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, I spoke to you on the phone, though. Yeah, yeah. A couple of locals. Yeah. And one of them, you can see his name's Cassidy. Something wrong with his foot. I think we've noticed that it's probably up in that body. How long have you noticed the limping for? Uh, two days. Two yeah. days, yeah. I was sitting in the library, yes, and uh, looking out the window and uh, noticed these two ducks down on the lawn. Ushered Joey over and then noticed one moving of the distinct limp. So we thought we'd give you guys a call. Chris, Dr Chris Brown. The Bondi vet. So yeah, what, everyone yeah. feeds these ducks here? Well, I yeah, think so, yeah. 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 Yeah, they're part of They're the part, part of the local, uh, <laughs> local gang. Even though I've been called out to help out a duck in trouble, when I first arrive, it looks like the opposite. These ducks are not in trouble. They are living the life. It is sort of this, this safe haven here with no dogs. But at the same time, at night, yes. when there's no one around, it's very easy for a dog to get in here or even a cat or, yeah. or a fox. So, I mean... <laughs> For them, and for that particular duck, they're on the clock in a way because yeah. they have to be able to, to run away or fly away. Yes. Otherwise, yeah. rather than eating, they become the one eaten. Ooh. Mm. Do you just want to throw a little bit just here yeah. and we'll see if we can get quite close and have a closer look at that lead. Hey, look at this. Look at that. From about a metre away, I can see that Cassidy is definitely holding that leg in a different way. It's up on its toes. And he does that, essentially, to move the weight away from the problem areas. Working out exactly where those problem areas are, it's my challenge. What do you notice about where he is right now? He's always staying an arm's length away. Yes, he is. They're it? not stupid. They're, no. they're great survivors, these guys. Yeah. And he knows he's fragile. He knows that he's vulnerable right now. And yeah. so he's not willing to, to risk anything happening to him. But we're going to have to catch him. Yeah. And is there a technique? <laughs> well, you're, you're potentially about to see a whole lot of them. <laughs> the technique is you do a lot of this. <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll take notes. You want away? Oh, Wade, just want to grab that diary. At the Australian Reptile Park, it's weigh-in time for Orphan Joey's Russell and Reggie. Let's do Reggie first. Tim and Bill have recently become surrogate mothers to the Joeys. All right. It's a full-time job, as these little bundles need round-the-clock care. Joey's at Russell and Reggie's age are still totally dependent on Mum. This is a full-on job. The only thing that gets more full-on is two Joeys at once. 6.7. Yeah, awesome. That's a 100 grams up, eh? Yeah, that's great. All right, so 
6.7 plus 100, you say? Yeah. Any discharge? What we do is take a weight, which is a really easy observation on general health. Do they put on weight or lose weight? And as well as that, we check for simple things like any signs of discharge, hydration, and just the general well-being of the joeys. Ears are great. Eyes are good. I'm sorry, Reds. Don't get cranky, buddy. OK, so that's good. You want to just check his hydration, Bill? Yeah, we're good. Good as gold? Yeah. My favourite question of the day. How was he last night? Do you want the short answer or the long answer? Short answer for now. Well, he had a party all night long, so he's very worn out. Yeah, so he, he's happy. <laughs> he's happy. I put Reggie happy, Billy not so happy. Bill and I love Reggie and Russell equally, but I do give him a bit of a hard time because Reggie was a bit older when he was orphaned. Now, that means he's a bit of a handful. He gives Bill a bit of stick. By stick, keeps him up all night, sometimes won't take his bottle, put him on the ground, he takes off. Russell is an angel. Yeah, 5.2. He's up 50. Just. That's not bad. Yeah, nice. That's all the milk he's getting, mate. He won't touch the solids. No surprises. The Joeys look great. Clean bill of health in all areas. You need to start on the solids, mate. Ears good, eyes good. I'll just check hydration while we're there. Forward, buddy. With both Joeys given a clean bill of health, it's now home time. And that means Tim and Bill are heading off and taking the little Joeys with them. Come on, Reg. That's it. Hold up, buddy. <laughs> you better grab him, mate. Gee, you've got him well trained, Bill. <laughs> Good boy, Russ. So, I have the food. Yeah, you're going to have, have the food. enticement. Yeah. Yes. At Double Bay, Chris urgently needs to catch and treat Cassidy the limping duck before he becomes an easy meal for the neighbourhood cats and dogs. Yeah, so, at the moment, yeah. they're just resting underneath the tree, but the eyes are definitely on us. Right. Yeah. They're going to be suspicious. Yes. But they've never seen a net before. Right. And that's going to work to our, our advantage here. Right. Okay, so what you need to do is get up there and be their best friend. We're going in with a simple strategy. Ideally, Richard will come in with the food first, distract them. They'll be so concerned about getting the food before the other one gets it, that then I can come around the back and grab Cassidy with the net. Cassidy, Cassidy, Cassidy. Mm, we're sticking together. Do you get the feeling they know what's going on? Mm. The closer I get to Cassidy, the further away he gets. He knows right now that he's vulnerable. Come on, hop along. See what I mean? <laughs> it does fly. We've hit our first major hurdle. Catching any sort of wildlife is never straightforward, and you have to really learn from each failed attempt and put Guess the improved version into the next attempt. Let's see something. Wind's blowing that way, so he's going to take off into the wind. Yeah. All right. So if we herd him with the wind, yes, then he can't take off. Right. He's going to have to turn around and run at us yes. to actually get off the ground. Okay. The thing you have to remember is that birds always take off into the wind. If we do everything now from the wind side and work upwind, then essentially he shouldn't be able to take off. Come up a bit closer there, Joey. You can stop them from getting over that side. Cassidy, come on. Come on, hop along. There we go. Well done. Hey, well, hey, 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 it's okay. It's okay. okay. Now I've finally captured Cassidy. It's a matter of working out what's going on here. So everything's fine in there. No sign of any parasites. The gum colour is nice and pink. Yeah. Tongue's a good colour too, so I'm confident everything's fine there. This, these feet, though, are intriguing. When I look at the right leg, the good leg, it's interesting and unexpected because he actually has some quite serious sores on the webbing of that foot. He's actually got infections yeah. in the base of this other foot. So whether he's actually taking the weight on this foot and the problem's actually been in this foot all along, oh, yeah. which would be quite strange, but... Yeah. To be honest right now, I'm confused and totally baffled because we knew he had one sore leg, but now does he have two? Ah. Hey, mate. Hey, hey, hey. It's all right. Hello, boys. <laughs> Tim has arrived home from the Australian Reptile Park with little orphan Joey Russell. 
and it's time for all the youngsters to have some fun. Hey, baby, how are you? How are you? Good. Hello. Come on. Hey, watch out for the little fella. Come on. What do you want to do? Let him have a hop? Come on. Anything that you can possibly think of Australian animals, we've had it at home. Feather tail gliders, sugar gliders, koalas, kangaroos, wombats, Tassie devils and birds. Anything Australian, it's been here. <laughs> Whoa! Here he comes! Oh. Hello! Come here, Russ. He'll bite you. The boys are always a bit scary in the afternoons for him. He's had a nice quiet day. Come on, who wants to come and give his belly a tickle, please? You know, I never forget how lucky I am to be able to bring my kids up with wildlife. Being around it teaches them compassion, empathy, understanding, and they're better for it. <laughs> Russell! <laughs> oh, no, we might need a towel. But today, Russell isn't setting a very good example for Tim's boys. He did a wee on the bench. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Russell. Well, we, we may as well let him finish now, hey? Oh, yes, there's always a constant mess when um, the boys are around, especially with the animals that Tim brings home. He doesn't like to clean up after them at all. <laughs> so that's my job. Close your eyes. But Tim's definitely in charge when it comes to bedtime. We love you. Close your eyes. Love you too, Moochie Poochie. <laughs> Can we leave Russell on the door? Russell will be with us for at least the next few months. But then he'll stay at work and we get a bit of relief. Here we go. Night, boys. Night, night, Russell. When he goes, I think the boys will miss him a lot. What I won't miss is the round-the-clock feeds. Love you, boys. I bet he'll be up through the middle of the night, but whether he is or he isn't doesn't matter, because tomorrow, back into it again. He's actually got infections yeah. in the base of his other foot. All right. Yeah. Which would be quite strange, but... In Double Bay near Bondi, Chris is trying to work out what's wrong with a native duck called Cassidy. So that's actually called bumblefoot, so yeah. they're foot infections. Right. Deep infections in the skin of his foot, and that's really dangerous. Locals Richard and Joey first noticed Cassidy's severe limp two days ago. So he's ripped it open, in a, in a and, sense, with and, too much yep, abrasion and, or water. And bacteria have got in there bacteria, now. Right, OK. Yeah. This is completely unexpected. Remember, this is the good leg, yet he's got quite a serious problem on it. This now complicates the situation. Have a look on the other side. So watch when I bin that up. Now I'm pushing quite hard. Yeah, yeah. I still... Yeah, it doesn't touch. It's 20 degrees, 30 degrees away from, yeah. from his foot touching his thigh. Yeah. Compared to... This one, which with no effort at all, yeah. goes the whole way up. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, you're a brave duck. So Cassidy has a foot infection on his right foot and an ankle problem on his left leg. Two problems, but I reckon there's one cause. Now, there's one thing that causes swelling like that yeah. and a lack of mobility right. in the ankles of ducks. Right. And it's something we normally see in older men that maybe drink a bit of beer. Gout. It's gout. Oh, my word. You've got gout, sport. Mm. Oh, no. Speak to anyone that has gout and they say it is absolute agony. It's essentially a metabolic abnormality that affects people, it affects all sorts of animals, and it certainly affects ducks. What's happening is each time Cassidy eats food that contains protein and nitrogen, he tries to break that down, but he doesn't do it properly. As a result of his metabolic abnormality, he produces crystals. Those crystals are lodging in his ankle. And Chris doesn't have to look far to find the cause. See that right there? Mm. That's not a normal neck. That's actually a collection of all the food he's eaten in the last hour or so. And that is about that big. I mean, yeah. that, that's an entire day's worth of food for him, but he's eaten that in the last hour, yeah. just going around hassling people for food. Because Cassidy is such a guts, he's filling his body with all sorts of human food, human food that contains protein that a duck normally doesn't have to break down. His body's struggling with it, so it makes sense that he's having so much trouble walking around on that left ankle of his. You know, bless him. I saw someone trying to feed him sushi before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for him to break down proteins which he normally doesn't eat, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. causes him to produce all these extra waste products okay. which produce the crystals which yeah. lodge in his joints. Yeah. So, you know, in a way, he's a victim of his lifestyle. A modern diet. 
to fix gout, what you need to do is give Cassidy a tablet which helps to metabolise that protein and get rid of those waste products safely. So he's going to get two things. Yeah. Something for the gout yeah. and an antibiotic yeah. for his foot. <laughs> Cassidy is a cute little guy, but the fact is, with the diet that he has right now, he's not going to stay around for too much longer. So if we can change that, give him his medication, then hopefully Hop Along Cassidy will be Hop Along no more. Well done, you. Look, look, look. Ooh, hop along. Cassidy will need medication for another month, so Chris is enlisting the help of Joey and Richard to give him his tablets and keep an eye on his diet. Here you go, little guy. You go and see her. Off you go. Here you go. We can save Cassidy, I'm sure we can. I'm more than 100% sure. He needs to cut down on the rubbish tucker and with Joey's and our involvement, Cassidy will be a farm. It's almost all over to you guys now. Yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll monitor Cassidy and look after him and give him his tablets. So, today is the start of the rest of his life. <laughs> Excellent. I'll be in touch though. Oh, okay, great. all right. Good luck. Thanks, Any problems, Chris. let me know. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. People complain about cats needing exercise, but for you, it's never really a problem, is it? In Bondi, it's been two weeks since little Cricket was de-sexed. Always that little bit too far away, right? But Chris's cheeky housemate isn't taking any time to rest and recuperate. Normally, an operation like de-sexing will slow a cat down for quite a few days, maybe even a week or so. For Cricket, not so much. In fact, if anything, over the last few weeks, she's kind of stepped it up a notch. Now you're growing up, we should really think about well, school. But what if the teacher gets out a laser pointer? Is this going to happen? Instead of chasing male cats, she now chases lasers and balls all day, day in, day out. I always knew that cricket was a bit different. It's kind of the reason why I adopted her in the first place. I never really realised just how different she'd be. A lot of people think cats are independent. Cricket is not one of those cats. She's needy. This is what I mean. Just always has to be there. Centre of attention. We're going to have an interesting life together. Hi, I'm Dr Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.